It's another week, and I think we're going to do a walkthrough in the gun shop just to kind of see if anything new came in or what's going on. I'm kind of here leaning on my vice trying to think about what we're going to do, but I can start with my junky, unorganized bench here. You know what they say, a clean bench, an organized bench is a sign of a sick mind? Well, you can see that I'm right on top. I've got all kinds of junk laying here. I'm, I'm getting ready to get organized here. Here's a daily in for uh, some mainsprings. This is that 1148 we just talked about on the video with the deep hitting. i got to kind of get a file on that, see if I can even salvage it. I might replace that receiver. I've got a, a superposed barrel here that had a bulge at the uh, end that we took out. Now we got to polish it. That bulge is gone. Uh, bulges in barrels depends where they are and how bad they are as to whether or not they can be removed. A bulge is just a cosmetic thing, but it doesn't hurt anything. It just looks bad. So that's the story on the junkie bench here today. Here's a 12-gauge. Um, 1148 uh, one of my favorite old guns cheap to buy and they just work forever this one's in for a complete restoration so that's where we are we still have hanging on the wall tons of A5s are hanging here waiting on wood to get finished up we always have a backlog of wood as you uh, swing around and look at the other walls nothing's changed here since probably the last video we did as you can see a5s these are all these have all been blued rebuilt and engraved here comes one of the helpers through the door um, these are all waiting on wood so that's the story on all these guns hanging here we have on the rack here all kinds of repair work that's come in of all sorts and uh we have more racks over here of course more right. repair work uh, racks over here the shelf over here is kind of guns that have come in I haven't been able to get to yet. Still in the boxes. Uh, if you got a gun in here, just give me give me a break. I'm, I'm working on getting to them. Uh, many of these have been approved and are ready to go. Uh, we have another rack. I see here these these receivers up here. These are mostly superposed receivers. Here's some Dianas, Pigeons, Grade Ones. These have all been blued and uh, assembled. They're just laying here waiting for uh, the wood. It's always the wood. Here's a, a little Browning 380 I blew for a man the other day. Kind of a cool little gun. He wanted to uh, give it to his son, and he had me engrave on here. To my son, comma, love. Kind of cool. Uh, that'd be a nice gift for a son. Uh, more Dianas of all sorts here, waiting on wood. Wood's always a problem. So uh, we have here another rack of repair work. <clears throat> that uh, we're uh, trying to work our way towards. Uh, a lot of these are customer guns. A lot of them are mine, too. If they have a tag on their mine. These are guns I have restored or we're thinking about restoring them. And then we have here our, uh, our what I call our fine gun room, kind of like Cabela's has. And as you can see, heavy on brownings of all sorts, A5s, BARs, uh, double autos, crap like this, oh, you know, just don't pay attention to that. I get that stuff in off and on, but that's not my thing, believe me. Uh, I see lots of interesting 85. Oh, looking at this one. This one, one that we bought recently that uh, it's got some silver inlays in it. Kind of a cool old gun. And, uh, I don't, you know, it's aftermarket engraving and all, but it's not bad. It's just kind of a, it's going to be a good shooter gun. I put some new Japanese wood on it and all that with a little figure in so it's going to be a shoot. But, you know, there's a lot of that in here at this time. There's other engraved guns and every A5 imaginable, superposed, Satori's, uh, PARs, you know, there's an oddball few things. There's a Winchester, you know, I get that stuff in off and on. It's just not my, my cup of tea, but... We've got them here. So, uh, uh, Browning's mostly, probably 90% of which is going to be Browning's. We have, here's a Model 12, and I recently bought a ton of Winchester Model 12 parts. And uh, I don't have time to really get into servicing these guns too much, but I guess we're going to have to, because I've got parts galore. We'll go back and look at those parts and uh, talk about those. Uh, I have parts that nobody's got anywhere. Go back and see what we can find. There again, that's These are guns. They've been approved. Some of them, some of them haven't. 
I, I'm working my way to get them apart. I'm just not there yet. Grinding, buffing, polishing equipment. This is a prep area where we polish guns. As you can see, a lot of grinders and buffers and what what have you of all sorts. A few machines back in the machine shop area. Uh, glass B machine cannot run a business without a glass B cabinet. Here's my model 12 parts. <clears throat> um, there's 97 Winchester parts in here. These are Browning BT-99. Got a lot of those. BT-99 is a, a pretty much an obsolete gun now. I have parts that Browning doesn't have anymore. Uh, so if you need parts for B, here's one of the biggest parts right here. Um, that's an ejector hammer. These things break all the time, and they need to be replaced. And here's something else that breaks. Ejectors break on them. And let's see if I have an ejector extension. They really break. I don't see one in there. We're Browning's out of them. I'm just about out of them. Here's one. We have these in the machine shop being made. That's an ejector extension goes on your BT-99. When that part breaks, you got nothing. It doesn't extract. It doesn't do anything. If your ejector hammer breaks, you just have an extractor gun. It'll still lift them out and you can grab them up. But to make them work, you have to have that ejector extension. And we're having machine shop make those up. Probably be kind of pricey because it costs money to have parts made up, but we'll have them. We have Winchester 97 parts. I have a lot of Model 21 parts we just bought. Paid a lot of money for this stuff. So it's going to be pretty expensive if you call me needing any because not that I'm trying to hold you up, but it's just that I paid a lot of money for that. A lot of 21 parts in there. Sears, little, here's hammers. The firing pin tips break off of these hammers. And uh, I've got lots of them. Any about Model 20 cocking pieces. I got anything you need for a Model 21, just about. These little selector buttons, I've been known to lose those, putting them in guns, and then had to buy new ones, and they weren't cheap. But I've got lots of 21 parts right there. Uh, model 12 parts. Well, here's some 101. I got a lot of 101 parts. I really didn't want to get too much into the 101 business, even though I have done jobs of them over the years. I guess I got to keep doing them because now. Thank goodness I've got parts for them. That's a real obsolete gun. There's parts in here you won't find anywhere, and I've got them. Uh, model 12, here's the Model 12. I got, got, look at all the, look at all the adjustment sleeves I've got here. Here's the adjustment sleeve. One through six, A, B. Uh, these rings, uh, I'm probably not gonna make much effort to sell these if anybody calls wanting one, because It'd be inevitable i'll probably send you the wrong ring here's a number four so i'll probably just have you send the gun to me and i'll put these adjustment sleeves in there's that ring and phone again again so model 12 uh i have hard to find parts uh these uh, these strip out on you uh, guns get dropped and bent a tang piece uh oh here's a uh, here's just any kind of part you need for uh, model 12 the uh, takedown pin a little spring that goes in it uh, I have thousands of parts for these things now all the screws you can ever imagine um, here this little uh, adjustment I've, I've been known to lose these little uh, keepers that hold the uh, uh, barrel adjustment ring in place I've got those so I've got anything you'll need for my There again, I'm not trying to hold you up, but I paid a lot of money for this stuff, so it's not going to be real cheap to buy it, but I've got it. So firing pins, I've got like a thousand of them kicking around here because they tend to break the firing pins, the tips break off. The guns usually keep working because the, the tip breaks off and it can't get out of the bolt. It's trapped within the bolt body, and so the main body, the thing, but anyway, what they do is they stick eventually in the bolt face and they slam fire on you, so need to replace it. I have bolts. I have parts for Model 12s that just probably nobody's going to have out there. So uh, ejectors by the dozens. So if you need Model 12 stuff, uh, I've got them. And I, in my buyout of the parts I bought, I did get some parts that I really... There's more firing pins for Model 12. No shortage on those. Uh, Extractor springs, right, left. There's everything here you can imagine. Uh, here's a Model 12 hammers. I got one. I got several hundred in there. Um, I talked about the one on one. Oh, some other parts I got. I really don't. I'm not a Beretta guy, but with 
in all that stuff was parts for a lot of res and uh, a lot of 390 parts and what have you 680s 391s I've got lots of bread of parts uh, I'm not your guy for doing mechanical stuff on about half the parts so anyway that's our latest buy out on Winchester parts so keep us in mind if you need model 12 parts because we've got them and uh, back here under my here more look at all these adjustment sleeves right here look at that stuff tons of it these are model 1148 springs we're doing a little of that a little of modification on them getting those ready and what we're doing once those springs we're going to blow them and then we're going to assemble up these little collar assemblies here for the 1148 that's a 12 gauge and uh uh, when you get you buy your kit, you'll find one of these in there for 12 gauge. Take out everything you've got in the gun, get rid of it, put this new one in. That spring will really help you. Out. So that's kind of where we are today. Back to here's the prep room. We've got gobs of stuff hanging here, ready to be polished, getting it ready to blue. We have a rack full of small parts here I've got to get to and get it done. I think we've done a walkthrough in our uh, bluing area before. This is kind of a prep room when we get things polished that comes in here. And uh, then we, on bluing days, this whole rack will be full of uh, everything you can imagine. So there's not much in here today, but in the next few days, it's going to load up again. When I, on days I blew, every nail is full of something here, receiver, barrel, something. We just blew a couple days ago, so it's done, but I blew more than anybody in the country, so there'll be more. And then we do our bluing in this room here. We keep our bluing set up separate from everything else because bluing is a dirty, nasty mess. Uh, just it's what it is, so we got to keep that out away from everything else. But this is where the bluing operation takes place. Uh, we have rinse tanks, we have silver solder, blacker tanks, a couple salt tanks, and degreaser tanks. And so that's where the, the real dirty work takes place. So that's kind of our walkthrough for, for this week over at Arts Gun Shop.